An unlikely location to visit a tropical garden is Sky Garden in central London, located at the top of a skyscraper, commonly known as the Walkie Talkie. Sky Garden is London's highest public garden. Entrance is free, although you may have to book your tickets in advance to avoid disappointment. There are restaurants and bars for those seeking refreshments, which enjoy superb views of the city. Or simply come to enjoy the garden and take some stunning panoramic photos of the surroundings. The designers of Sky Garden have chosen several drought-tolerant species from the Mediterranean, South Africa and Asia, as well as several Australian tree ferns. Plants were specifically chosen for their ability to thrive, for the quality of light that's available in this unique environment. Although the overall garden space is relatively small, for a free attraction, it's definitely worth visiting. So let's take a look at some of the plants you can see here. Dimorphotheca pluvialis is commonly known as the rain daisy and is native to South Africa and Nambia. It's an upright annual growing to around 40 centimetres in height with daisy-like flowers in summer to early autumn. It prefers full sun and a sheltered spot. Epiprenum aureum is also known as the golden pothos and is native to French Polynesia. It's a climbing vine which uses aerial roots to adhere to surfaces and is commonly grown in the UK as a houseplant. They're easy to care for but do not like too much water, so make sure the soil is dry before watering again. Bocania recovata, or the ponytail palm, is native to Mexico, although it's not a species of palm tree as the common name suggests. They grow on rocky soils deficient in nutrients and on cliffs and steep mountains. Therefore, too much water is the most frequent mistake made when growing this as a houseplant. Chlorophytum camosum is commonly known as the spider plant due to the spidery offsets it produces. It's native to South Africa and is commonly grown as a houseplant in the UK. It is, however, sensitive to fluoride in tap water, which gives it burnt tips, although leaves can also be scorched by direct sunlight or dry air. Cycas circinalis is also known as the Queen Sago and is native to southern India. It's a slow-growing cycad, which can grow up to 3.5 metres tall. It prefers full sun and sandy soil, but would need to be brought indoors over winter. Begonia maculata, or the polka dot begonia, is native to Brazilian rainforests. It's commonly grown as a houseplant, but prefers warmth, humidity and indirect sunlight in order to thrive. Avoid misting leaves directly and keep away from drafts and radiators. Cymbidium devonianum is a variety of orchid native to Nepal and China, which bears olive brown to yellow green flowers from spring to summer. It prefers partial shade and a sheltered spot, and can be grown outside in the UK during the summer months. Diune spinulosum is also known as the giant diune, and is native to Mexico. It's one of the tallest cycads in the world, growing to 12 metres in height and grows in soil with few nutrients, soils rich in limestone, and on slopes. It's hardy down to minus two degrees, so will need extra protection over winter. Sertonium falcatum is a species of fern commonly known as the Japanese holly fern, and is native to East Asia. It grows from crevices in coastal cliffs and rocky slopes, but will do well in most soil types, and in full or partial shade. It's hardy in warmer areas of the UK. Tradescantia zebrina is a creeping plant commonly known as the silver inch plant. It's native to Mexico and Colombia, as well as the Caribbean islands. It's commonly grown as a houseplant in the UK, where it prefers bright, indirect sun and regular watering to make sure the soil is always moist. Atherium nipponicum is commonly known as the Japanese painted fern and is native to Eastern Asia. It's a striking, deciduous fern, which grows best in acidic to neutral soil, in partial or full shade. It's hardy throughout most of the UK. Cyathea cooperi is also known as the scaly tree fern, 
and Cyathea medullaris is known as the black tree fern. Both are native to Australia, with long, arching, elegant fronds. They prefer partial shade and may be hardy in warmer areas of the UK. However, even then will likely need additional winter protection. Caryotomitis is known as the Burmese fishtail palm and is native to tropical Asia. The nickname comes from the unusual shape of the leaves, making this a distinctive palm. It grows best in shade or partial shade outdoors in summer and is an easy-to-care-for houseplant in winter. Rapis excelsa is also known as the broadleaf lady palm and is native to southern China. It's a versatile, slow-growing palm that adapts very well to being grown indoors in pots. It can tolerate low light and should be watered when the top two inches of soil are dry to the touch. Howia forsteriana is commonly known as the Kentia palm and is endemic to Australia. It's a beautiful and air purifying houseplant which is low maintenance, happy in most light conditions and only requiring water when the top two inches of soil are dry. Arachneode simplicia or the East Indian holly fern is a striking plant native to Asia. It's an evergreen fern with thick glossy fronds which can grow in moist soils, in shade or in part shade and is hardy in warmer areas of the UK. Strelitzia reginae is commonly known as the bird of paradise due to its distinctive orange flowers and is native to South Africa. It grows best in full sun or part shade and prefers to be root bound in a pot to encourage flowering, ideally by overwintering in a bright conservatory. Cycas revoluta or the sago palm is a cycad native to southern Japan. It's a slow-growing plant which can survive temperatures down to minus 7 degrees if kept dry and with warmer day temperatures. But it also grows well in a pot which can be brought inside. Agave attenuata is commonly known as the foxtail agave and is native to Mexico. It has pale green leaves on top of a thick stem and can grow to 1.5 metres tall. It prefers full sun, but must be brought indoors during the colder months. Bishonaria yacoides is a succulent native to Mexico. It's a stemless plant with long linear leaves and a flower spike reaching to nearly 2 metres tall. The flowers will provide nectar and pollen for bees and other pollinating insects. It prefers full sun and is hardy in milder areas of the UK. In cooler areas of the UK, this plant can be grown in a pot and brought indoors. Ropalostylis sapida is commonly known as the Nikau palm and is endemic to New Zealand. It's a slow-growing palm with long feather-like leaves and can grow up to 12 metres tall. It prefers partial shade and can tolerate low temperatures but would be killed by frosts. Clivia nobilis, or the green tip forest lily, is a flowering plant native to South Africa. Outside in summer, they prefer full sun or partial shade, but as houseplants, they like indirect light and regular watering, with a cool, dry spell in winter to initiate flowering. Clivia sertanthiflora is a hybrid clivia which can flower in nearly any month of the year but primarily autumn to spring. It grows best in shaded areas and will again need protection from frosts over winter. Geranium madarens is also known as the giant herb robert and is native to Madeira. It can grow a metre and a half tall, bearing spectacular pink flowers. It's hardy in milder areas of the UK and grows well in full sun, partial shade or full shade. If you're enjoying the content of Freya's Tropical Garden, then please help this channel grow by subscribing. Every new subscriber is appreciated. And by turning on notifications to my videos, you can also make sure that you don't miss any episodes in future. You can also follow me on social media, where I'll release links to my latest videos, as well as share my flower of the day. You can follow me on X, Instagram, Threads, Facebook, 
or join my Facebook group to engage in discussions and share your own photos. Freya's Tropical Garden webpage also has links to my videos and helpful advice. And now, in order to support the continued growth of this channel, there is an option of becoming a member, which will give you access to a private Facebook group where I'll be running monthly competitions exclusively for members, as well as additional exclusive content. And as always, I welcome your feedback in the comments below.